on this, this cold night and really sorry we had to uh, for uh, had to take it. we had to cancel our kids' service tonight, our pizza and prayer because uh, because we, we were out uh, water today uh, or this afternoon um, and uh, so we're, none of our toilets are and we couldn't have had our kitchen uh, so anyway, but I think it's back on and I, I appreciate uh, Aaron McCarthy for uh, fixing all the broken lines that we had uh, in the community. Um, and I've got a, a scripture on my heart, um, and I, I'm just going to also brag on my wife. Uh, she's, she's starting to do the co plunge with me, and uh, she did it for four minutes today, and I'm saying that live on Facebook. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But hey, guys, uh, um, i got a, a scripture that's on my heart tonight, and it's in, uh, we're going to be in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, and, and the Apostle Paul's earliest letters are from the Thessalonians, and it's, 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 it's possible that perhaps he, he, uh, he, he uh, wrote Galatians, that letter first, but these two letters were written to real people who faced real challenges, who, who, would, would, um, would, who were not supportive of, uh, of the, they were fighting a place that was not supportive of Christian faith, and and we live in a similar world today, and you guys hear me preach on it all the time, but understanding the context and the purpose of these two significant letters and Thessalonians, we're going to appreciate how reasonable they are for us today in this world. And, and one of the, the phrases I thought was fascinating uh, in this, and you guys have heard it before, and it's throughout the Bible, it's this term, a thief in the night. Jesus will come like a thief in the night. And the context of this verse is, how we all have to be prepared for Jesus to return with no regrets. Now, time is God's currency. We all have plenty of it, but we don't know when it's going to run out. And Jesus unites his believers, but he also separates the non-believers. And many times we don't understand that. And the Bible is clear uh, about how Jesus will come the second time and and that phrase, as a thief in the night. And the question tonight that I'm going to ask our, our uh, church and our um, folks that are w uh, watching online, if Jesus comes tonight, are you ready to, re to greet him with open arms or will you see him as a thief in the night? And I'm going to read here in 1 Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter uh, uh, 5. Verses, um, verses 1 through 5, as I read God's word. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Verse 5, you are sons of the light and sons of the day. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. And I thank you for this word that you put on my heart tonight. I thank the, thank you, uh, for, I'm thankful for those who brave the cold weather uh, to come tonight and listen to our word, Lord. And I, and I, and I just ask, Lord, that you would just... Uh, this will be a message from you tonight and, and not from me. And Father, we love you and we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to look at this. We're going to analyze this first verse here. When Paul's writing in this, and he's writing to the church, and he's writing to the Thessalonians, but, but concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. So, you know, it's fascinating. We've talked um, and before um, about, you know, the, the seasons and the times and the cycles. And it's an interesting fact in the Bible that there are 800 uh, verses in the Bible where God talks about times and seasons and cycles, and that's almost one verse for every page if you think about it. And when you do your Bible study and you're reading your Bible, you can see that, that, the, he's, that, that God is always speaking to us. You know, I find it fascinating. The more you read the Bible, and we've talked about it so many times in here, especially in this Bible study, and you, and you just you keep reading and reading, you're, you're going to run into God, and He's going to communicate to you. But what we see in this, in this 
in this, in this uh, book, and even it started in, in, in Genesis, you see this narrative in the book of Genesis where God created lights and heavens to separate the day from the night. And, and to serve as a sign for seasons and years. Because lights, you know, light gives, a, gives a light to the earth, Genesis 1.14. And, you know, so, so then because of that, you have these, these and the, the way the rotation of the earth goes, you have a spring, you have a, 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 you know, a summer, a winter, and a fall. And, or as I like to call them, football, basketball, and baseball seasons. We have these seasons but we also see the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon. I'm going to read to you from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything, there's a season. There's a time of a purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up on, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to embracing, a time to gain. Time to lose, time to keep, time to throw away, time to tear, time to sow, time to keep silent, time to speak, time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Every single one of you right now are going through a season. Every one of you, every one of you uh, uh, that are watching online today, church, are going through a season. We all are. People in this room and people that, that are watching you all are going through a season. We have to understand that. And so look at this verse here when it says times and seasons. The prophet Daniel used this phrase when God gave him the understanding of the king's dream. When our Lord uses the same phrase in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 7, he confirmed that times and seasons are connected to Israel. He said there will be a time while God has specific plans for all nations. I find it fascinating. Uh, there's a famous preacher named A.T. Pearson. And he once said that, that history is God's story. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. History is God's story. But, but stark, stark contrast to uh, Napoleon's definition of history. And Napoleon defines history as a set of lies agreed upon. Unfortunately, we see that so many times in today's world. God has appointed times and seasons. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 if you in your Bible. And look what it says here. It says, For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord as comes as a what? A thief in the night. Now, when you see this term, the day of the Lord, and mentioned in the Bible, it can refer to a single 24-hour period. Sometimes they... they you, they use it in the context of a, a longer period of time where, where God sets out to accomplish a specific purpose, maybe in the Old Testament. Uh, for instance, in Genesis 2-3, a day means a 24-hour period. Uh, uh, and that's what it means. God created the world, and I believe it, in six days. That's what he did. And I believe they were literally days, okay? But, but here's what we want, have to understand. God is preparing for his uh, people. When he says the day of the Lord, a phrase was also described in the time of Jacob. And when you remember, as mentioned in Jeremiah 37, uh, it even being referred to in the Bible is in, 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 in the book of Amos and Isaiah. And this period is also known as a tribulation, a period of tribulation, the day of the Lord when he's going to come. And this event is vividly described in Revelation, especially in chapter 6 through 19. A thief in the night, our Lord used this image when he was talking about uh, teaching in Matthew and describes the suddenness and the surpriseness that he's going to return to the earth. What do you think about that? Revelation chapter 3, verse 3 says, Remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I came upon you. Those are pretty strong words, and they're in red letters. He would further say in Revelation 16, 5, he used this image to warn believers not to be caught napping since we do not know when the Lord's going to return. We don't know when that is. Now, we could put these concepts together, and we could see why Paul was teaching this to a troubled congregation and his friends because he had already told them about the coming of the Christ. He had told them that there would be a period of intense suffering, intense tribulation. 
And it's going to happen in our time. These times and seasons, they relate also to nations that will be in mourning. It's not going to apply to the church, though. You know why? Because we're going to be taken up in the rapture. We will indeed. The suddenness of these events will be very real for our friends and our loved ones that don't know Christ. That will be very hard. The second coming of Jesus Christ is said to be like a thief in the night. And when you make that comparison, church, it's like no one can predict when Jesus will return. Just like a thief can, can catch a whole household off guard, Jesus will catch the unbelievers off guard when he returns to pass judgment. And that's what we want to avoid. People we be busy with their day. I'm always reminded of the, the time that they had that big tsunami, uh, I think off the coast of India, or uh, I can't remember, Burma several years ago. And everybody was at the beach, and you had this camera, and it was showing. They were just, they were chilling at the beach. They had restaurants going, and uh, uh, kids were playing soccer, and people were out sunbathing. Tsunami came. Boom. And just wiped everybody off the face of the earth. And this, this camera that was, was, was up, up uh, high recorded the whole thing. In a second, all those people were dead. They didn't have time to think. Without warning, judgment day will arrive. And it will be taken by surprise. This is why we have to share the gospel as much as we possibly can. But notice here in verse 3. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape peace and safety. Think about those two words. See, the world's always promised us peace and safety. You saw it. Davos is doing it today in the World Economic Forum. They're promising peace and safety, and we already know what that means. The world will talk about peace and safety, but there is no peace and safety without Jesus Christ. I saw, I read a story a couple nights ago about Mark Zuckerberg. Now, you guys know Mark Zuckerberg. He's the owner of Facebook, and he's probably one of the richest, the wealthiest, and I would also submit probably one of the most evil people in the world. He's reportedly constructing an enormous underground shelter that's worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for himself and some select friends and family. Just in case a doomsday scenario, but he's been working on that feverishly here, as reports are, for the last several months. And it's important to remember that no shelter will protect anybody during the Great Tribulation, not one. Jesus will come into that shelter, yes, like a thief in the night. The blood of Jesus can save us all, but no amount of money, no amount of physical security, no amount of guarantee or safety can take us only the blood of christ but notice here in verse four but you brethren you are not in darkness so that day should overtake you as should not overtake you as a thief in the night as a thief those who have not accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior should heed this warning because he will come be ready because the son of man will come in an hour that you do not expect the believer though who is us does not need to fear this sudden judgment and the thief in the night because we will not be caught off guard. We will not be caught off guard. Christians are in a separate category. You see, we are, we, we, we are separated. Just like he said in the book of Revelation, he will separate the sheep from the goats. Brother, but brothers and sisters, you are not in darkness, so this day should not surprise you like a thief. You see those words. It's only those who live in darkness will be taken back by this. And they're shocked. But we are the children of the light. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. And I so appreciate that. And thanks to God. And in closing tonight, we're going to close with verse 5 here. I want you to let this sink in. And I think this explains it all. You are sons of light and sons of day. We are not of the night nor the darkness. And the question really isn't for us, because we're always ready. The question is those who don't have Christ. This is what our obligation is. This is why 
God has provided us a way to, you, to escape the judgment. That is Jesus Christ. By accepting Jesus Christ, you don't have to worry about the thief in the night because you're guaranteed of your forgiveness of sins. You're guaranteed a mercy. You're guaranteed salvation. You're guaranteed the promise of an everlasting life. The thief is coming, but he's not coming for the child of the day. With every head bowed and all eyes closed, Father God, I thank you and I praise you and I thank you for these wonderful souls that are here tonight on this cold, cold, windy night. Thank you for the blessings. And Father, if there's somebody right now listening on one of the platforms that we're publishing on right now live that has never accepted you, let this be time. It's really simple. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that you are the Son of God. And commit forever. Understand the gospel is the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if there's somebody out there that doesn't know that, because once they accept that reality, they will have protection and they will never have to worry about the thief in the night. Father God, we love you. And we just ask the blessings to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.